In this video, we're going to discuss adding new nodes to your SIM and configuring connectors. So we're going to start off on our dashboard by going to our nodes tab at the top. You'll see we don't currently have any nodes configured for our new SIM here, but we're going to add a couple. Now, nodes in SIM are basically divided up between agent nodes and non-agent nodes. That is, anything that cannot have an agent installed on it, such as your network devices, your firewalls, etc. So we're going to start off by adding a non-agent node. Now, in this example, we're going to use a Cisco ASA firewall. And we're going to go through the whole configuration process for that. So we're first going to start off by configuring our ASA firewall to send its syslog data over to SAM's IP address. To do that, we'll start a PuTTY session or a Telnet session over to our device. Get logged in there. And we'll just run through a few commands here to get this logging to our IP address. In this example, we can use conf terminal. We can use logging enable. If you don't have logging enabled at all, you may want to do that. Then we're just going to add our host. So we're going to do logging host, the uh, interface we want to we want to monitor, which is inside in this case, and SEM's IP address. Okay, so that should have added this to the table, and it should start sending data immediately. We also probably want to verify which logging facility this particular device is sending the data to, because we're going to need to know that information when we configure a connector for it. To do that, we can do a show log with a pipe include the line facility. So it looks like our syslog facility is going to be number 23, which in this case is going to translate to the local 7 facility on SEM because SEM uses our syslog, and that's how the translation works. So we're assuming now we're sending data to local 7 on SEM. Very good. So we're halfway there. All we really need to do now is configure a connector on SEM side to interpret and parse that data and it should add the appropriate node as needed. So we're gonna to go to the Manager Connectors tab. And from here, we can go add any of the appliance site or manager site connectors we need to do, which typically means any of your internal connectors for SAM itself, such as the email connector, or we, uh, in this case, we want to add a non-agent connector, right? So any anything for our network devices and our firewalls are gonna end up start, uh, being configured from here. So what we want to do is go to the Manager Connectors tab and search for the connector in question, which in this case is going to be an ASA or an iOS connector. This is the one we're looking for right here. And we just want to add that connector. Now the most important field you're going to see on any connector configuration screen is going to be this log file field. This is the one you have to get right or this isn't going to work at all. So as we just discussed, we verified on our device that we are actually sending to local 7. And this is configured by default for local 2. So we have to make a slight adjustment here. Okay, we'll change that to local seven. I could also change the name if I wanted to name this something else, but that doesn't really have an effect on anything. This is just the name that presents itself in all of the events that it pulls in. So for every event you see from this device, the uh, tool alias field is gonna be marked as Cisco ASA and iOS. If you wanted to name it something else that you would prefer, by all means. Um, the output, you probably don't need to adjust. We obviously want to send this to a normalized database. This is a standard database that all SEM use. And there is also the option to configure a raw database that is a completely separate database that is not enabled by default. But that is a, an entirely different discussion. We'll, we'll leave that out there. There's plenty of documentation on enabling the raw database if you have a desire to do that. So we're going to add this. Now, none of the connector is going to start automatically. You'll see it has a stopped state right here. We're going to go ahead and start it up, like so. We should see a success message on the top right corner and a green status icon. OK, so at this point, we have our data supposedly going to local 7. We have our connector configured. So this really should, should be all we need to do. If we go back to the nodes tab, we should see that our IP address for this particular ASA node has already been added automatically. This means we are successfully receiving and interpreting those events. We can go to the events tab and verify that because we're seeing a lot of events come in from this detection IP address. Okay, so that is our first non-agent node. Not much of an issue. The agent side of it isn't, uh, is actually even easier, right? All we really need to do to add an agent node is actually install an agent somewhere. So if we click on this add agent node button, all this really does is give us links to all of the different supported OSs and their installers. Okay, so grab the OS, grab the installer that's appropriate for whatever system you want to install on. And then hop over to that system. And in this case, we're gonna use our, our patch server here. And I just wanna save that agent somewhere locally and we're gonna launch it from there. So I'm gonna right click on this, do a run as admin. 
We're just going to run through this installation process. It's very simple. It just takes a few seconds. OK, so basically just follow the prompts here. <clears throat> Most important thing is to get the manager host field correctly. You want your IP or your host name for your SEM. So I'm going to use my IP address here. You want to leave the install legacy and secure ports to be the default. That's not something you really want to mess with most of the time. Hit next a couple of times. Now you have the option to install the USB Defender. <clears throat> this is an optional component of all Windows SEM agents. It is not mandatory, but it is very useful if you intend to monitor, use SEM to monitor your USB mass storage device activity. So if you want SEM to keep track of your, your employees' uh, fobs and uh, removal drives and external hard drives and that sort of thing, you'll want to be sure to install USB Defender with that agent. In this case, I've got a, I've got a VM. That's a server. It has no USB port, so I could probably not do that. But uh, use your discretion there. Just as a, an important tip, the USB Defender cannot really be installed separately. It has to be installed through this installer. So if you decide later that you want to add the USB Defender, that's going to be an agent uninstall and reinstall. So this just takes a few seconds to copy the files over and start the service. Okay, next to start. You'll see a log output where you can go down and verify that things are working properly. Refresh if necessary. But at this point, we should be able to see an agent in this notes tab. If we don't yet, we can just hit reload data. And there it just pops right in. Okay, so that's as simple as that. Non-agent nodes, you just add the appropriate connector and make sure it's logging the data to the sim. For agent nodes, you simply install the agent. OK, so our next step is going to be add additional connectors to this new agent node. OK, so let's have a look at that. If I select it and do a Manage Node Connectors, this brings us to the Node Connectors page. Now, there's an important distinction in connectors. You have the manager or the appliance side connectors, which we configured for our Cisco ASA. Those are actually housed on the appliance. You also have the agent site connectors, and those are housed in the actual agent that's deployed on this uh, remote server. OK, so whenever you configure a new connector, you have to realize, you have to think about and realize um, which side of the, of the wall do I want to configure that connector for? Is it coming from an actual agent device, an agent uh, Windows machine, Linux machine, et cetera? Or is it coming from something without an agent like uh, my firewall? That will play heavily into it. OK, now you'll see here at the top, we already have a few connectors pre-configured for this Windows agent. Just as a tip, um, the Windows agent are always going to come pre-configured with these four connectors out of the box, which covers the active response commands, which we'll get into later, and the three primary Windows logs. So we have the application security and the system logs. So they're already configured, and they're already, they're already logging automatically. OK. This only happens with the Windows agent. If you're selling a Linux or a Unix or a Mac or a Solaris agent elsewhere, they do not come pre-configured with connectors for various reasons. OK, so we want to be sure to come into the Manage Nodes screen for those new agents, those new agent nodes once they're installed, and configure the appropriate connectors for them, or you're not going to get any data from them. So in this case, our primaries are covered, but maybe we want to add some secondary logs in Windows here to get that information as well. Maybe. Maybe this uh, patch server that I'm looking at is actually logging DNS or DHCP or something. So we can do a quick keyword search. Maybe we want to monitor the DNS traffic log for Windows. We could add the appropriate connector for that. Now again, the primary field we care about here is going to be this log file field. We want to be sure this log file path is accurate. Now you notice the log file path is always a local file path. You don't want to use UNC or any other format here. It should be local to that agent. So. As far as the agent is concerned, we're looking at the C drive. So let's verify that this log actually exists. We're in the directory that we're looking at. And if that's all good, we can just go ahead and add this. Again, we want to start it up. It should go green. And assuming that log file exists and we're getting traffic to it, we're now receiving traffic in the SAM from this connector as well. OK. And that covers connector basics. But let's talk about a few troubleshooting scenarios that may, may or may not come into play. OK, so a couple of common troubleshooting situations is you've configured your devices, you've configured your connectors, but you're not seeing any logs appear in the SIM, or you may not see a node appear for that device, right? 
And there's really a couple of things that could be going wrong with that. Um, one, the in the case of let's let's go back to our manager connectors, and in the case of our Cisco ASA, let's say we're not uh, we're not getting any we're not getting any logs or events from this device after we configured for it, right? There could be a few things going wrong. One, we're simply not getting the data. Period. Two, it could be going to a different log file than we thought. Maybe it's going to local five into the, into the instead of the local seven that we configured. It's always possible. Um, three, we're simply just using the wrong connector, period. Okay. Now, most of the connectors are, are named very well and are very clear in what devices they cover. If we do you know, just any sort of keyword search, just by brand or by model, et cetera, we're probably gonna find what we're looking for without too much fuss. But there are a few situations where it might be a little trickier, such as the situation of Cisco, where we have over 30 connectors for Cisco, and some of them are very close. We have a couple of IDS IPSs, secure ACSs, right? Sometimes they're, they're differentiated by version. Sometimes they're differentiated by log format, or sometimes there really is no clear delineation, right? Um, so, what you probably want to do in this case is first verify that the logs are coming in where you expect them. In this case, what we could do is hop over. Let's get rid of our connection here. We're going to start a new session and just point it straight towards our SEM and log into the SEM CLI. All right, let's bring that over here. We're logging as the CMC user always. Okay. Now from this CLI interface, we can do a lot of things, but what we're trying to do right now is verify where our logs are going to from that Cisco ASA device. So what I can do is go to the appliance menu and type the command here for check logs. And this allows us to look at all of the raw syslog files, SNE files, etc. All those internal files, all those internal logs in the SEM, and we can verify whether there's data going to it or not. So firstly, we want to pay a primary attention to this middle section here for the local facilities. Most likely, nine, eight out of eight out of ten times, it's going to be sent to one of these facilities, no matter what device uh, is sending that data. Okay, that's just that's just syslog format standard, really. There are exceptions. You may see data going to user log or system log or mail.log, etc. But you probably want to start here. In this case, we can see all but one of these are empty. Our local 7.log actually has a fair amount of data in it. Okay, so we're probably getting the data where we expected, but we may want to actually look in that log file and ver verify that it's the data we're thinking it is and it's coming from the IP address we thought. So let's do number 19 for that uh, line for local 7. We just click the end of the file, just a few lines. And here's the actual raw syslog file that we're looking at. So we can quickly see that this is indeed ASA data. And this is indeed coming from the IP address of our, of our ASA firewall. Okay. So if that's the case, great. You're good, you're good to go. You verify that it's going to local 7. Great. So let's assume you've done that and you're still not getting the data. Really, all that could be going wrong at this point is you're simply using the wrong connector. So maybe this is an, I, an ASA device. Maybe it turns out that it's uh, actually an older device running CatOS, or maybe it's a wireless device um, dummy running uh, uh, you know, one of these wireless LAN controllers down here, um, a WLC device. That's the name I was looking for. So. Let's say, uh, let's say you have a couple of options of connectors. What you probably want to do next is simply stop the connector you configured previously and go configure the next connector in line as far as uh, potential candidates, right? Now, this sounds like a lot of work, but this happens very rarely, and there's probably going to be at most two or three connectors that are even possibilities for your particular data. So this really only takes a couple minutes to actually try out, okay? So not too painful. In this case, we're good to go, so I'll leave that connector alone. Um, that is one pretty common troubleshooting scenario. A um, couple, actually. What about if um, I'm trying to add a new connector for my device and I do some searching here? I'm not sure what we, uh, we're not supporting yet, but let's just do a quick keyword search and we're getting no results in our connectors list. 
Okay, we we do have a fairly comprehensive list down here. If you if we look down at the bottom, we've got many hundreds of connectors at this point. We have even more on the agent side. So we support a lot of different individual log sources, but there's a lot of different devices out there and there's a lot of different brands out there. We can't possibly support everything already. So there's always work in progress there and there's always new connectors coming out to support new devices. It could very well be that your particular device doesn't quite have a connector yet. So if that's the case, if you do multiple keyword searches and you're coming up with zip, um, we are happy to create a new connector for you to read that data as long as it, as it has the data in the appropriate format, such as syslog or a local log flat file, etc. cetera, um, then we're happy to do that for you. It's actually part of your maintenance package. So um, in that case, what you'll want to do is raise a case with our support team here. I just give them a call or raise a case online. Say, I need a new connector for this device. They'll ask you for certain information like what version or firmware are you running? Where is the default log path? They'll want a sample of data, etc. But once they have all of that, they'll send it over to our connectors team here who will work on that for a little bit. And eventually we'll pop out with a brand new connector that will be available for everybody. Okay, so that is something that uh, may or may not happen, but it's good to be aware that it exists. Now, the final troubleshooting scenario we're going to do today is what happens if everything is configured correctly and we know that this data exists, but we're still not seeing any new events for it. Let's run through one more example. So we're going to do check logs again. And we can see that our data is going to local 7. We know that we're using the right connector. And we know this connector is, using, is pointing at that local 7 uh, facility. So what's the problem? Well, there's really only one, one other thing that might be going on here. It could be that this particular log source is on the quiet side. It could be that this isn't a ASA firewall. It might be a lower level Cisco switch, which doesn't really send a lot of traffic by default just do what it's due to its nature. So what you can do to verify that is have a close look at the log files and verify the timestamp on those. Um, so what I can do is just do a look at the log file again. I want I, This time I definitely want to go to the end of the log file. And with this check logs command, this is essentially a less command in Linux. So all the appropriate keyboard shortcuts are going to work here. So I can do a shift G to go to the very end of the file. And I can look at the very end line, the very last line, and get um, and get the time step of off, off of it. Okay. So if you're familiar with syslog, you'll know that this very first section here is the epoch timestamp. So what I can do is open up a new tab and just do a quick Google search for epoch time converter. You'll, you'll find one very quickly. And I can simply paste this code into that box and translate that. You can see that this most recent event came in one minute ago. So that's probably not a problem in my case, but I'm not having any problems. So um, what we can get from this is essentially, it's important to know that when you configure a new connector, it's not going to go to the very top or start of a log file and just start you know, start from scratch, right? It's going to start reading brand new events as soon as you turn that connector on. If that happens to be at the very end of today's log file, so be it. Um, so in this case, let's assume our timestamp actually turned out to be maybe 20 minutes ago, right? Our most recent event was 20 minutes ago. What happens if we just added this connector five minutes ago? It may very well be that the connector is, is a proper connector and we're using it correctly. It's configured correctly, but we haven't gotten any events because there simply haven't been any new events. So this is a little process you can do to actually verify that scenario. That really concludes everything we wanted to talk about with this adding nodes and connectors video. So thanks for your attention. We'll see you next time.